All right. So this is CIS 256. And uh, let's continue with um, the topic of Python review. Okay. Um, last time we reviewed some basic uh, Python um, data structures and um, basic syntax. We talk about list dictionaries and um, tuples, which are super important, and the modularization method using functions um, is also important. Today, we can talk about another method, uh, another way of um, modularize the uh, code, which is using class and objects. Okay, um, so in Python, everything is actually object. You know, um, if you look at uh, simple integers, floating numbers, uh, strings, lists, and uh, dictionaries, they are all objects, right? These are the instance of object. Every object has a type. Um, so each type is uh, a class, all right? And some, you know, complicated type like dictionaries, you know, they are a collection of data, um, and also uh, the strings and as well, right? These data or class uh, has set of procedures to interact with objects. Say, for example, in strings, you learn there's a lot of string method, right? Uh, convert to a lowercase, uh, uppercase, capitalize it, you name it. Okay, you can even sort the number in the list or uh, and such. So basically the concept of uh, object and class is uh, very important, right? The distinction is object is made out of the class. It's like a template, right? A cookie cutter is a class or blueprint, but the object is made from this cookie cutter, uh, but they are different each, right? So, uh, Hello is an instance of a string. Uh, one, two, three, four is an instance of integer. Okay. So what is object-oriented programming? Well, um, basically, you uh, using objects and uh, classes, you can you know abstract the data. Uh, you know, in terms of the uh, members, variables, and procedures or member functions. So you basically treat it as a individual objects and make it um, a, you know, like, like a fundamental uh, data type. And then you can do a lot of things with that, right? So you can abstract, abstract away uh, the, the detailed implementation from, from the user. User can only need to know the uh, you know exposed API that you designed for that class, and they can use that class method to manipulate the data. Okay, so there is a standard data objects, like I said, list tuples and strings. You should be very familiar with all these typical methods, uh, like slicing, uh, you know, uh, at extend list, delete data, and such. Right, search for occurrence of a number. Uh, and so on and so forth. So these are built-in type. And now uh, for, for, for this uh, part, you're gonna write your own, own class, right? So a list, for example, um, is, um, you know, you know the public uh, interface for the, for the list, but you may not necessarily need to know how to implement the list, right? For example, the core data inside the list could be a linked list. Right, so the linked list basically is a data structure we'll talk about later where you have a node and have a pointer or uh, you're pointing to the next node. So you don't necessarily uh, put them into one chunk of memory anymore, right? As long as you have this you know, pointer points to the next address of, of next element in the list, they are coherently linked together right, logically. So it's a linked list. Um, and uh, you can do all kinds of uh, operation like take length, minimum, maximum, delete numbers, extended, and, and so on and so forth. 
right? But you don't need to know if I in the, if tomorrow I want to replace that by an array, you wouldn't you uh well it will not uh affect those methods that you already know with right. Okay, so that's the idea. That's called encapsulation. It abstract it, it abstract away um the internal representation of the layer, and you only expose the called interface, right? So that's another layer of abstraction. So how to create a class, a custom class, so that you can use it as if it's a built-in class, right? So you first have to define the name. You have to give the class a name, and then and then you can define the attributes and methods, right? So create a so if you use that, that's the creating the class. That's the remember blueprint. Once you design the blueprint, you can use the class class you designed to create a new instance of the object from the class. And you can do operation on them. Okay. So um, the advantage of OOP, obviously, basically you can bundle together the data into packages as a coherence logic uh, unit, right? So for example, in game design, oftentimes there is uh, a lot of uh, um, repeated pattern. Uh, for example, you can treat the uh, the game as a whole unit, and and then individually there is the heroes and uh, as for, as for uh, you know the big boss and uh, other adversaries in the game, you can um, model them as a object, right? And then the the hero can have uh, skills, have health data, health number, and have uh, you know weapons and stuff. These are the attributes of the hero, and then you can um, store these attributes as, as you know part of the class, okay. Um, and then of course, uh, class make it easy to use a code um, through either you know different classes and they have a relationship. We talk about subclasses, inheritance, and stuff that you can you can uh, use to make it more powerful. All right, to uh, reuse the code. Okay, so define a class. Uh, you should already know it's a definition using keywords class lowercase, and then with uh, followed by the class name. Just like define a function, you use def def right a function name. Um, but here usually class name is uh, capitalized, and then with parentheses, which is necessary. Inside it, it's optional. You can put the parent class of of the current class. Uh, the all classes have a parent object. Right, so you can do that, or you can just omit it by default, and then don't forget the column. And after that, indentation is important, and you can define the attributes here after this line. Okay. Um, so, so in terms of the you know subclass and superclass, this nomenclature. Coordinate in this case is a subclass of object. So object is a parent of coordinate, and it's a, all we can call it a superclass of coordinate. So in the class, you have data attributes. Um, it's like you know, when you describe something, you need to make up some attributes, and that's what it is, right? And then they, along with some procedural uh, methods. It's like what the class can do, it's a verb, okay? All right, so here, there's an example. If we have a class called coordinate and a 2D coordinate, you have typically in a in some uh, reference system, you will describe it as a, a coordinate in X and Y direction, right? So you have at least the two attributes. What's the X axis and Y axis? And that's basic, uh, basic data. Now, when you define a init function, init function is a special method. There's a underscore, underscore, init, underscore, underscore. That's called the uh, double underscore, right? Or dander. Dander is how to uh, describe those kind of method. So dander init is basically um, a uh, initialization function. For, for every class where, where you create the class, it will be automatically called. 
So the, the function of this, uh, this uh, init, standard init function, basically to set up the attributes for you, right? And the first uh, parameter for any uh, class method is always self. The self itself uh, can be arbitrary. You can, you don't need to say self, you can say this or that, but you have to be consistent. So the first L, uh, parameter is always refer to the uh, instance instance of, of the class. So that's very useful when you're doing some, you know, class level um, method comparison to other similar class, for example. So when you create the class object, you can call the class name with uh, with a parameter in specified by any function. And the self is omitted because it's by default uh, supplied by Python. So you only need to supply two variables, additional variables other than self. Okay, so this C and origin is two objects with different uh, uh, coordinate, yet they are from the same class, right? So same blueprint, but different coordinates, X and Y. If you want to print C.X and origin of X, it'd be three and zero. So they are different, okay? All right, when you call it, don't pro provide the self, it's, it's automatically uh, inferred. All right, so that's how you use a class. Um, and also the class method or procedure is like a function works only with this class, right? So it's not a, like a, a public function, but it's associated with class. So that's why the function has the first parameter self that's associated with the object of the class. Python always pass actual object as the first argument convention is to use self as the name of the first argument, but you can use other like this. And the dot operator used to access an attribute, okay? So you have a class called uh, origin, which is uh, from, from the blueprint called a coordinate. The origin dot x will give you the attribute x. And origin dot distance, if you implement the method, you will get the distance from origin to another point. We'll implement this here. So the distance method has two parameters. Of course, the first one is always the object self, right? It's like automatically. And then the, the second one is, is a real uh, meaningful parameter where it's referring to the other, uh, other coordinate object. So basically you want to get the difference between X and Y, delta X, delta Y, is the self dot x minus other dot y uh, dot x? So you can see this self is useful now to refer to the the uh, the object it's being invoked on self, right? And then it compared to the other and using uh, the uh, um, Pythagorean theorem, you can get the square root of x squared plus y squared. That's the distance uh, of the two point. So other than the self and the dot notation, the methods is basically like uh, the functions. You can take parameters, you can do operations and return value. So yeah, that's that's basically it. Okay. Now here's another comparison between um, how you um, call the uh, uh, the method, right? Class method. So. There is a way that you can use the individual object and the dot and the, the method. And then with the parameter uh, of other uh, other points, uh, again, you don't need to put self here because it's uh, implied. And you can also just directly call the coordinate itself with two parameters. Um, so dot distance C and origin. In this case, you do need to pass both points because the class method, not the object method, it does not know uh, the self, right? The self represents a particular object, but the class method don't have any object to associated with it. It's a blueprint. You have to have two um, objects 
uh, in that uh, in that call. All right, so that's the different difference. This is called class method. This is object a particular method, a specific method. So you can omit itself because it's implied. Right? Python know uh, the first memory is always C itself. Okay. So um, and there's also other gender method. Uh, the double underscore method in Python is really uh, very uh, rich. Uh, so you can have a lot of, uh, you know, the yeah, expansion of uh, original things that you you want to uh, you want to infer from a, any object. For example, any object need a meaningful description of self as a string. When you print that object, this method then the string is called, right? So, um, so for example, I want to, when you print the object C, uh, C being the coordinate object, I want to print out something like square, uh, sorry, angle brackets, X comma Y angle brackets. So you want to find this, you can define this in your dender string method. So on the dender string method, you can return uh, a string, uh, you can, coin up the string like this, um, and it will give you a meaningful string representation of that object, right? So for example, if you run this in the Python IDE, you, you get coordinate three, four, you print C gets three, four. And if you print the type of C, it's a class man dot coordinate, all right? You can use the is instance to check if the object is a instance of that class, for example, is instance of C comma coordinate and it should return true. Okay, so there's other special dender methods like dender add, dender sub means subtraction, dender equal is equal uh, to, to implement the comparison of uh, operators, dender LT means less than. Uh, when you compare two objects, you want to implement this dender LT method so the uh, the object can uh, class knows how to treat um, how to compare stuff right then the lens and then the string for the print uh, then the lens if you call a lens function on that object it will know how to give you a lens right for example list tuples and uh, uh, other uh, sets okay dokie so remember the string multiply there is a dender mult as well. Um, multiply five means the uh, concatenate the string five times. So that's uh, comes in handy. For more, you can go to the Python documentation and see more dender method. Okay, so let's talk about an example to how to create a custom uh, fun, uh, class. So in this example, we'll create a fraction um, class, all right? So it's a new type, represent a number as a fraction. There's no such built-in type in Python. Um, internally, I want to represent the fraction in two integers. You, as you know, it's numerator denominator, okay? Um, and then bunch of interface or method uh, to let people to interact with, uh, with fractions. For example, print the representation of fraction, add, subtract, maybe multiplication, division, and how to convert to a floating the, uh, representation. Okay, first of all, define the class, um, and of course the superclass is object. Uh, in the dender init method, you have uh, two uh, attributes, numerator denominator. You can initialize this fraction with directly passing in these two, and it will be saved in the attributes. Okay, don't forget the self. Um, these two names do not need to be agreed. And then the string will give a uh, representation of a string representation of this fraction, which is uh, numerator slash forward slash denominator. All right. So, so yeah, let's 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 um, type this class fraction um, object. Okay, and then uh, init method and init, All right? Uh, don't forget self, numerator, denominator, and 
you just say self numerator is numerator, self denominator is equal to denominator. Okay, so, and then I want to have a standard string function. So when I print the, um, so if I say return a string, <clears throat> return, let's say f string self dot numerator divided by self dot denominator. Okay. So um, maybe I could use angle bracket, just, uh, you know, customize it, right? All right, so how to use it? Well, uh, F1 is fraction. So let's say one over two. Well, one and two, right? This is F2 is fraction, another fraction, three comma four. And print F1, oops, F1 and F2. Okay, let's run it. As you can see, it has two fraction one over two and zero over four. All right, cool. So now we're gonna define some, um, like how to add two fractions. So other than self, what do you need? You need to add the self and other fraction, right? All right. So to add a fraction, um, usually, Let's give you an example, right? Um, say one over two plus three over four. So that's equal to, uh, you probably already know, uh, you have to make the denominator the same, which you use two, uh, two, times, uh, two times four, right? Two times four as a denominator. And in the numerator, you have one times four plus uh, three times, what, two, right? And then the whole thing will be divided by two times four. All right, so given that equation, so the numerator, new numerator, which is on, um, above uh, the fraction line is, uh, let's see, others denominator, all right, times self numerator, right, one plus other denominator, and plus others numerator times self uh, denominator. So, and you add them up. Okay. And then denominator is basically others new uh, denominator times self uh, denominator. Okay. And then uh, you can return a new fraction. I'm just using the constructor. Uh, that, give them that, and that's the add. So if I want to print F1, add F2. This is, again, a F string. And I use this syntax. Uh, let's see if it works. So F1 plus F2. Oh, look at that. Uh, is an uh, object. That's a fraction object, right? How do you? Um,
print that. Wait. Uh, wait a second. What if I... Uh, Do this. Yeah, okay. That will give you 10 over 8. That's good. So that's a new um, addition, right? Subtraction, it's a similar fashion. Um, and then let's define a. So I, I will leave you, I'll leave it as an exercise so you can uh, implement subtraction as well and multiplication division. In a textbook, there's also a method to simplify them because this is, as you can see, has a greatest common denominator, like uh, what is that? Two, so five over four. And you need to uh, divide both sides, the numerator and denominator by the GCD. And uh, there's a function to tackle the GCD for the two numbers. All right, um, and you can read the book. So convert, uh, sorry, I'm not gonna implement this, but I can implement the conversion. So very simple, if you want to convert this number fraction into a floating number, you can just return the self numerator divided by self dot denominator, right? And this is not into division. You can see this is a regular division. So what if I want to convert I want to do dot convert, right? Okay. And we'll see how it goes. Wait. Uh, let's do another for instance. Uh, So let's do this. Let's do f equal to f1 plus f2, All right? So print f. And I'm going to also print the convert. Uh, f dot convert. All right. Um, let's see. Let's see if uh, if it works. Okay. So just print F and it's covered. All right. So you can see it used to be ten over eight. Now I convert to floating. It will be one point two five. Okay. So that's a introduction to uh, to um, we call it uh, basic uh, class and. Um, objects, object-oriented programming in a class one dot pi. All right, so now let's talk about inheritance, which is uh, uh, also a very, uh, very uh, uh, important one. Um, so what inheritance is, uh, basically, uh, if you have um, a hierarchy of of things, right? Hierarchy of things. For example, I can define a class called um, animal. All right, animal is uh, inherent from an object. Of course, every class has a inherent from object. Um, then the init will show um, animal has age, right? And self uh, dot age to age. And maybe uh, there will be a name, but not all the animal has a name. So, oh, well, we could say none means no no name for now. You can um, have a getter method, get a name, get a edge, right? Get edge. So basically, simply just return self dot edge, right? You can do get name as well. Um, and you can also set an edge, right? 
this is actually a recommended way to do gather and status on the attributes instead of modifying the attribute itself because you don't necessarily need to let people know what's the name of your internal representation of these attributes. For example, if uh, later on, let me, let me finish this. Um, so self dot age is equal to new age, which I need a new age. Okay, uh, yeah. Setter gathers. The benefit of doing this is people only need to remember this API to be able to set and get attributes. When in if tomorrow you want to say my age, right? It will be fine. You can only you can modify the implementation of it, and the user don't need to uh, change it, his interface. So that's the benefit of using the gather and setters. And of course. Uh, a string representation, then the string will be um, a string. Um, uh, animal. Well, dot name. Um, well, dot age. All right. So that's uh, our implementation of animal. Now, we can have a subclass, right? For example, cat, which is an animal. This is a way to inherit the parent. So it cat has all the attributes and method from the parent, plus it has some additional things. So you don't need to do in it uh, again because uh, it's already initialized in a parent. But in the speak method, you can print meal, right? Um, and of course, in the then the string method, you can uh, self. You can return cat. Uh, uh, string cat self dot name. Self dot age. So it's very similar to animals method, but you just add a cat here. All right. So now uh, we're gonna do the do a couple of other other class, but uh, in the interest of time, I'm gonna just uh, copy and paste something here. So this is a rabbit, right? Um, And um, and then uh, when you use it, remember you see by using inheritance, right? Uh, you don't need to. Uh, so there's a lot of uh, function that's free from the base class. This is called base class sometimes. This is a derived class. And it will be very helpful if you know how to use it. Like uh, Jelly is equal to cat, one year old. Um, jelly, set name. You can set a name later called Jelly. All right, and tiger is cat of one year old. Tiger dot set name. Tiger, jelly and tiger, and bean is cat of zero. And uh, bean set name. Let's say it's bean. Okay, now we can print jelly. Um, and let's uh, let's say jelly dot speak. Okay. And and blob is animal 
one year old. Um, Peter is rabbit, three year old. And Peter speak. And and yeah, so let's let's take a look at uh, how this works. Okay, uh, has no attribute set name. Uh, what's going on here? Um, oh, I didn't implement set name. Okay, and just implement in the base class set name. Name. Dot name equal to name. All right. Did I right, run it? Okay, so cat is the jelly. Uh, so you printed out jelly's name. Jelly is a cat. And uh, jelly speaks meow and um, rabbit speak is this me. All right, so you can see how those um, inheritance work. Okay. Um, let's go back to the slides. Uh, we talk about these fractions. Um, and we have those methods. Uh, all right, so that's it. So, so for the entire class, we can see the computer science is the subject of study problem solving. Hopefully uh, it, it, it typically use abstraction uh, to representing um, the real world, physical world by modeling. Um, and Python, as you can see, is very powerful, easy to use object-oriented languages. These two print strings built in sequential collection never see useful, right? Dictionary sets a non-sequential collection of data. Um, and using class and function, you can abstract away the data type um, and uh, reuse your code. Um, and also don't forget there's an inheritance and hierarchy of classes. Uh, should always in so the class constructor always have to invoke the construct of its parent before in tuning on its own data. Basically, you inherit from parents and then you modify it. Okay, so I think that's uh, all for uh, class, and you know, and hopefully when you run this, uh, uh, you know, quizzes, you will get more uh, information about uh, about uh, classes and your homework. Uh, let me let me briefly talk about the homework. Problem set one um, basically says, uh, you go to Replit IT, you have to enroll in this account. Um, so then you can see the instructions. So basically a cipher, right? This is a, a Caesar cipher. So a Caesar cipher is a very simple cipher. Um, in the computer, it's you have alphabet and you specify the shift. So say like three shift and letter A, each letter is shifted to the right three positions. So A become D. Right, A, B, C, D, B become E, C become F, and so on. So your original text will be uh, scrambled, in other words, right? And this is very easy to decode once you know the shift. Shift is the key, right? Once you know shift, you can shift every letter by that number. And if, you, if a Z is wrapped around to A, okay? So 20, 26, 0, 25th, right? And 26th position go to zero's position. So that's the basic, um, to decode it, you just shift back, right? So your task is to implement these functions inside a class, encryption, decryption, uh, cipher, um, and then plain text, cipher text. So plain text is the original message, cipher text is encrypted message. Your job is to implement uh, these uh, functions so you can actually decode the message, okay? So first, this, uh, you just follow this part one, part two, um, and you should be fine, okay? You just go that in order. You build the shift dictionary, apply the shift, right? So message class um, contains that should be used. So let's go back to and look at the message class. So you have this main function, which is already there. There's a starting code. 
and you're supposed to implement this class. Now the load words function is already implemented for you. Basically, it reads a word from a list of a file from, from a file. In this case, it's a story.txt. Oh, sorry, words.txt. And then you they put they read this file, put it into a memory, and you know you get the word list in the memory. Okay. So this word function basically given a word, you test if this word is in the dictionary of the words, all right? And this is very simple. You strip some irrelevant string and finally you leave the word. Get story string. Uh, so finally you are need to use your encryption class to decrypt a story, which is uh, the gibberish, right? The, you don't know what this means, but once you, uh, implement all the function, you can use that to decrypt this story and tell me what the story is about. Okay, so that's that's very interesting thing, isn't it? Um, and so um, so first class you want to implement is the message class. And you, you know, the init basically it contains message, which is original text and value the words is basically the words from the word list file name, right? Which is words.txt. And once you load these words, you get the message text, right? This is getter method. Uh, and uh, valid word is basically, um, give you a copy of, remember this is a copy of, of a list of words outside the class, right? So you don't want to return the reference to the words, you want to return the copy of them every time you you want to get this method. And the build shift dictionary is the key function in that whole entire class. So read this uh, instruction carefully, right? You are create a dictionary which can be used to apply a cipher to a letter. So giving a letter, uh, giving a cipher, right? A cipher. Um, the dictionary will map every uppercase and lowercase letter to a character shift down the alphabet by the input shift. Uh, so again, our lowercase and uppercase is 52 keys, um, 26 by 10 uh, times two, okay? Uh, and returns additional mapping letter to another letter given a shift. So there's particular dictionary for each shift, okay? So you need to delete this pass line and increment your own. Apply the shift. Once you have the shift, you apply the seal cipher to message text with input shift, then you get a encrypted message, right? So that one will give you, um, will return the message text. Every category is shifted down by the input. And of course there is a plain text message which is a derived, derived class of the message you just implement. The difference is uh, you don't need to uh, initialize it again. Uh, it just, uh, uh, you to add some more functions like get encryption dictionary to uh, sorry uh, get text encrypted right wait no uh, change shift so basically uh, this uh, plain text message you can you want to change the shift to uh, of the plain text message and updates the attribute determined by the shift right so every so basically uh, what what it wants. Um, is every time you call this function, it will return, uh, it will return nothing, but it will change the uh, encryption dictionary. And um, and that, that that one will represent how to, a mechanism to translate, convert one text to another, right? And this cipher text message is similar to the uh, plain text message. It's used to decrypt the message. So the plain text message uh, class is used to encrypt the message and the cipher text message is, is used to decrypt the message. All right. Uh, the, the difference between encrypt decryption is just that the shift direction, you shift it to, you know, uh, the opposite way, okay? Uh, and here, finally, there is some, some test um, vector here. You can test with hello, it has to uh, expect to give you this JQ 
and then Q. And if you give them JQ and Q, it will return hello to you with uh, Chef 24. <laughs> okay. And then finally, you have to use this cipher text message to decrypt the get story string, which is the this story. And you try to see what it gives you. Okay. So that's the whole project. I hope that you can uh, use the class uh, method that uh, you learned to finish that. As long as you follow the steps, uh, it should be okay. And if you have any questions or asking the Discord channel, and uh, I think someone will help you. All right, all right, that's it. Thank you.